So this is just a quick uh, overview of the Junior Cert uh, Music Higher Level Paper. Um, you'll see here that there's 300 marks on offer and it's a two hour exam. There's 10 questions on the exam paper, uh, but it's important at this stage to recognize that you're not actually going to uh, attempt all 10 questions. So you'll see question one is set songs worth 30 marks, which is here. Um, question two is set works, and that's worth 30 marks again. Question three is Irish music, it's worth a nice 40 marks. Question four is dictation, worth 40 marks. And question five is chosen works and songs, that's worth 40 marks. Question six is triads, 20 marks. Question seven, melody. There's three options here, there's A, B, and C. It's worth 35 marks. Uh, you uh, have the choice of doing B or C, uh, but I've X'd A as I don't think it's, it, it's the right one to attempt, uh, mainly based on the fact that we haven't done a whole lot of preparation for it in class. Question eight then, again has an, a choice of A, B, and C. I'm encouraging you to do C, which is backing chords, and it's worth 45 marks. Question nine is a big X. You can do question nine instead of doing questions six, seven, and eight. It's free composition and it's worth 100 marks. But as discussed in class, uh, you're going to attempt questions six, seven, and eight instead. Finally, then the last uh, exam question is question 10 on general study, and it's worth 20 marks, and it asks pretty much the same every year. So in this video, I'm going to take it question by question and just highlight some of the key things to look out for uh, that might help in your study for the mock and then for the actual junior cert as well. So on the second page of the exam, you actually have some special instructions and general instructions. Uh, I'm not going to read through them now, as you can do that yourself, uh, but I just want to highlight the fact that they're there and you should read through them. And it's a very, very uh, helpful advice. Um, even that you will have five minutes at the beginning to read the first six questions. That's important. Read the questions uh, so therefore you can answer the questions asked uh, rather than trying to second guess, uh, especially for the first half of the paper uh, because this is the listening section of the exam. And um, you know if you haven't read the question and the track starts playing, you could start panicking um, and you could miss your opportunity. Okay, The second half of the paper, uh, less so because you can go uh, back and do that in your own time. Question one on the exam paper is set songs. It's worth 30 marks as previously stated and there are four parts. A, B, C, and finally D. So A, B and C will each have an excerpt played and you'll be asked questions similar to what you see here. This is from the 2014 paper. You'll be asked uh, on you know what section um, of the course, what genre it would fit into, about rhythmic features, musical features. Um, it may ask you to define a musical feature, such as here, where it ref talks about sequences. It may ask for the composer of the song. It may ask uh, for the form. So they're the kind of general things you want to look out for for each of your set songs. I'm going to put a star here beside... Beside part D, because part D is significant because it's the one that doesn't have an excerpt, and people get caught out by this. They're waiting for the music to play. The music will not play. You have to look at the music here. This four bars here, and then identify just from looking at it uh, whether it's song one, song two, song three from the above sections. Some of the things to look out for here are the key signature the time signature, and then the general shape of the music. Similar to when in the dictation question you'll tap the rhythm uh, on, your, on your ear with your finger, I suggest that you tap through the rhythm here as that may, uh, may help you identify the song if you ha can't automatically. Finally then, just a quick point, um, three of your set songs will come up, there's eight of course, you do need to look over all eight. Uh, as any three could come up in any order. Question two is on set works. And as you know yourself, you study three set works. Uh, one of them uh, will appear here. Um, and the best advice here really is look through uh, the past exam questions uh, for when set C has come up uh, and look at the different types of questions that they're asking. 
if there's more than one movement in that particular set work, make sure that you can tell the difference by your ear, but also then by looking at the music. Okay, you want to learn the distinctive features, musical features, rhythmic features, um, and perhaps any distinctive styles that composer may have used. Question three is on Irish music, and it's worth 40 marks. Here you have three excerpts. You'll be asked to, you know, identify the type of dance, uh, name the dance, the time signature that is associated with that dance, and then a typical bar. So I'd recommend you go over your notes on the jig, the reel, and the hornpipe. And for the mock especially, go over those three, be able to identify them by ear using uh, your listening aids like Black & Decker, Galloping and Humpty Dumpty. There's other key words that come up in Irish music like Planxty explain this term. So as you go through uh, the past exam papers and if a word like that comes up and you, you, know, you just cannot remember or it's not coming to you quickly, go over it, write it out uh, and test yourself on that there. You'll also... Uh, may be asked uh, to identify some of the instruments playing the melody or the accompaniment uh, and a question that often comes up is identify one non-traditional feature or two or three non-traditional and traditional features so have a look through that list that you would have taken down in class um, non-traditional features could include uh, the use of instruments from the orchestra or an instrument like the guitar um, which, you know, wouldn't be a traditional Irish instrument, but it's commonly used in Cayley bands today. Except three then here asks specifically about a Cayley band. And then part D is usually a slightly longer question. There won't be an excerpt uh, played for this. And you could be asked about a Shano singing. You could be asked about a collector of Irish music like Edward Bunting. You could be asked to talk about the Belfast, Belfast Harp Festival or a traditional Irish performing group. Uh, so it's a good idea to have a couple of different options uh, prepared for this section. Question four then is the dictation question and it's worth 40 marks. Read through the instructions here at the start. You've got a four bar phrase played five times on the piano. There will be an appropriate pause after each playing. That will be slightly longer than you're used to in class, which will be a welcome surprise I'm sure. The third piece of advice then, the keynote do and tonic chord will be sounded before each playing. Right, with that then, I would quickly check what is the key signature. This is going to be key. Excuse the pun. You're going to look here. Okay, we've got two sharps. Now, from your study, you should know that that is uh, D major is your key signature. So what I'd write out then is the scale. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and D. And then below it or above it, I'd write down Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So. La, T, and Do. That's going to help me um, because it says here the keynote Do and the tonic chord will be sounded before each playing. So therefore, I can really get into the right key. I can say Do, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, T, Do. And then with that, you can start identifying where on the staircase you are going. Are you moving by steps? So Do, Re, Mi, or you're making uh, larger leaps, so, do, uh, leaps such as that. So that's going to really help you. You want to spend the first two of the five um, playings looking at the rhythm, trying to get the rhythm correct. After that, then you want to add in, add in the correct melody.
So next, if you look at uh, the three different parts of the marking scheme, you get 20 marks for adding the remaining 10 melody notes. Okay, so think about that for a second. It says 10 melody notes. So at, when you've completed your dictation, go and count in the melody notes that you've added in. Is there 10? There should be. It's telling you that on the paper. Then uh, B, here it says write the rhythm pattern. Of course, uh, in order to do A, you will have had to done B. So it's worth writing out the rhythm. Um, and don't forget to use your pencil. Okay, really important here. You don't want to be using pen um, on the music paper, especially when you're writing this music here. You want to be able to erase and, and change uh, depending on, on what you're hearing in each play. Finally then, you've got C, which is put in the bar lines, and this is where you need uh, to be getting those four marks. You've got your double bar lines. I'm going to do them extra big here. You'll do the much needed in this. Double bar line at the end, nice bar line there, and nice spaced bar lines. Uh, and there you've got your four marks. Take your time, start with the rhythm, add in the melody. Um, remember, usually a melody such as this would end on the note Do, which in this key um, is D. Okay, and it's usually going to end on a crotchet or a minimum. The other thing to remember is that you're more than likely going to have a dotted rhythm somewhere in, in the dictation. Okay, which is usually a dotted crotchet quaver. Not exclusively, but usually. Usually you have this type of a figure. And it usually appears in bar 2 or bar th oh, or bar 3. Okay, so bar 2 or bar 3. Bar 2 or bar 3. That's where you want to be looking for your dotted rhythm. It's got to be there somewhere. So when you hear the metronome at the start of the piece, that's going to give you your pulse. That's when you want to start tapping on your ear. And then seeing, is it coming on the one, two, three, four? Or is it coming on the one and two and three and four and? When you start hearing notes on the ands, that's where you got your dotted rhythm. It's somewhere around there. And then investigate that a little bit, um, a little bit more and you'll be flying. Question five is chosen songs and works. And although we haven't completed this section in class, I do want you to attempt it tomorrow in your mock. The sections that you can attempt, 100% are here, which I will highlight now. This section here, except one, so C, D, except two, E, and except three, F. So all of this highlighted here, you can attempt um, perfectly well in your mock. A section that will be difficult will be this section here, where they'll give you one of the categories from your set songs, where you should have learned another song as your chosen song or chosen work for that section. I want you to attempt this if you can. Uh, the main rule of thumb here is that you cannot use the same song that is in your set songs or your set works. Other than that, you're free to write down any song and any composer uh, from the category provided here. Okay, so give that your best shot. We'll work on that loads after the mock. Question six is the triad question, and it's the first question from the composing section of the exam. Again, it's important to read the instructions here like it is for every question. The t key signature is of particular importance for the triad question. You want to look here, how many sharps and flats. Um, don't forget to revise the five key signatures. The five key signatures that you need to know for your junior cert. So that's C major, which has no sharps or flats. G major, which has one sharp. D major, which has two sharps. F, which has one flat, and B flat, which has two flats. That's really important. If that seems strange to you, or you didn't know that off the tip of your tongue, revise that. That's going to be key for the whole music examination. Okay, so here we see there is one flat. 
So from our study, we know that that is F major. So at this point, I would write out the chord box. It doesn't tell you to write out a chord box. You're not required to. You don't get marks for it, and you won't lose marks for not doing it. However, it is the foolproof way of getting 20 marks out of 20 here. Write out your chord box, and there's no reason why you won't get full marks in A, B, C, and D. A uh, asks you to go to X and write down the letter names. So this is testing your uh, ability to read the treble clef. So here, X is there. You've got your three notes. You've got C, F, and A. And you can simply write them down. Now part B, name, these notes form the triad of. Because you've written your chord box, this is going to be easy to you. You're going to know straight away that this is the answer is F major because it's the chord of one from your chord box. Part C then uh, asks you to identify the triad of F, A and C on the bass clef. So revise your reading of the bass clef. Easiest way to do that is look through your notes and test yourself on name that note. Part D then is down here and it says select one of the following bars where this triad fits the melody. So look at bar 7, bar 8, bar 11, and bar 16. And whichever of those bars fits FAC the best, that's the one you highlight there. So even if bar 8 kind of fits, make sure you still check 11 and 16. This is similar to your backing chords question, question 8C. Best of luck. Question 7 then is the melody question. There's three options here, as I mentioned earlier, A, B, and C. We're not going to look at A. You have the option of B and C. So a phrase, set, a phrase set to a given opening and an answering phrase. So this is really your preference. You can either look at this opening bar here and write the following three bars, or look at this four-bar melody, and you write a four-bar answering phrase. Really, really, really important that you read the instructions here. They're very, very helpful. and give you a nice breakdown of what the marks are going for. Make sure you include the suitable phrasing. That is really um, referring here to bar lines. Make sure you've got your double bar lines at the end and your other bar lines. And make sure you space out the notes correctly and accurately. Add three notes to the given rhythm pattern. Compose a melody in the key of F for this rhythm. End on the keynote, that is Do. Add suitable phrasing. So as I would for the dictation question, I would write out the scale, and I'd write Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Ti, Do underneath, just to help with that, make sure that you're, you are answering that correctly. And remember, you can you don't you know feel free to end on a longer note, so maybe that's a minimum. Or as you see here in part C, uh, they've ended the first phrase with a dotted minimum in the time signature of three four. So it's important that you look at the key signature, the time signature, and the instructions provided. Part C, similar instructions, write a four bar melody, four bar rhythm pattern. Excuse me, compose a melody in the key of D. End on the keynote that is Do and add suitable phrasing once again. Best of luck. An added note on this is that you're asked to respond to what is provided. So whether it's part B, which is here, they give you this opening uh, bar. You don't want to just copy that for the next three, but it shouldn't be completely different either. So it's a phrase set to a given opening. So it, there should be some link. So feel free to use a similar rhythm pattern on one of the other bars or the shape, the fact that they've got uh, many leaps and then some step movement. Um, you know, you could be inspired by that. Same thing then applies down here. Look at the shape and the style of the first four bars and then, you know, create your own but have a link uh, to the first four bars. Question eight then is the fantastic chord progressions question. It's worth 45 marks and there's three options, A, B, and C. We're gonna go straight to option C, which is backing chords. You'll note there's some good uh, instructions here. Select a suitable symbol as a backing chord in each box. Do not use Roman numerals and do not have the same 
symbol twice in succession as discussed in class. They will, they will always give you at least the first bar, uh, the first box uh, completed on the exam paper. I would recommend that the next box you complete is the last one. Always complete a chord box for this question. So look at the key, two sharps, that's D major. Write out the full chord box and that's going to be key. You're then looking at the notes underneath the box. So here, excuse me, here, all the way up to where the next box is. So anything in this space you have to consider for this box here. Okay, I'll do that again below so if we're talking about this box here you need to consider this note this note this note and this note so consider all the notes that are underneath the box and up until the next box is that okay so the breakdown will be here to here to here to here to here those two those two, that single note and that single note. That's the breakdown of what you need to match the notes uh, with an appropriate chord to provide harmony. If at all possible, you want to end with the chord of one, so in this would be D major, and if you can, in the second last bar, you want to end with the chord of five. So that would leave you with chord of five, and then the last chord, chord of one. And this is a perfect cadence, if it fits. Question nine is the free composition. And you would only do question nine if you were not going to do question six, seven, and eight. So for question nine, we can do a big, nice X. You are not doing question nine. The last question on the exam paper is question 10, which is the general study, and it's worth 20 marks. Here you write in the name of your general study, you say which category it belongs to, you name one piece, its composer or performer, a second piece from that general study, the composer or the performer, uh, part C is, part C asks you to name three musical features and describe each one. Question 10 each year is some variation of that, where you'll include around three musical features and a description of each, so it's quite an easy question to prepare for. So that's it, your junior cert music exam. You've got 10 questions, you're gonna do question one, question two, question three, question four, question five, question six, question seven, question eight. You're not gonna do question nine and do question 10. So that's nine out of the 10 questions you're going to do your best. The only other choice in the paper then is question seven and question eight, where you can have the choice of B or C for a melody question, and you are gonna do part C for question eight. Okay, so have a look, familiarise yourself with the exam paper, look over through the past exam papers, particularly that from 2014, 2011, the years where your set songs and set works were asked. Any questions, please ask me on Schoology. Best of luck and enjoy.